Hello readers, I'm Amy here today with my February wrap up. I have a lot of books to go through so let's go ahead and get started. First, my 2020 goals are to read one novella per month, six big books throughout the year, whether that's one every other month, a bunch all at once, what have you. Um, one nonfiction per month, the Atwood book every month for what the book club read, and one classic per month. I did read one nonfiction this month. I read three novellas and I read two classics. So met those goals. Unfortunately, I did not finish the Atwood book of the month, which I will talk about in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and go through my books in chronological order. I actually read more books in February than I did in January, but I'm a lot less satisfied with February's reading. It felt very slumpy. I went ahead and read through the slump and I ended up really burning myself out. So I'm trying to take it slow for the beginning of March. So starting us off with The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher. I listened to the audio from my library. I really adored this. This was read by Carrie Fisher herself. Um, it's just, it's more a memoir of her time filming Star Wars and kind of her relationships with her co-stars. It particularly focuses on her affair with Harrison Ford, but it does branch out a little bit from that. It's not like an all-encompassing biography, but a memoir of that particular time in her life. I wasn't in love with the diary entries themselves that she included. They, they were really beautifully written, but they felt too edited, if you know what I mean. But overall, really enjoyed that book, would recommend it if you are interested in Carrie Fisher, which I actually do not care whatsoever about Star Wars. I read this book on a friend's recommendation, and even as a non-Star Wars fan, I still really loved this. I think Carrie Fisher's a pretty cool person. Next up was The 10,000 Doors of January. For this, I will link my review up above. I was kind of meh on the whole thing. I liked the idea. I didn't love the way that the author went through with it. I think the author has some growing to do in her writing, but I am interested to see what else she comes up with. This is a portal fantasy. It follows a girl kind of through childhood to young adulthood as she's discovering these portals that we don't really get to see. It's a whole thing. Again, a link in the review above. I have pros and cons, both. Third book of the month was The Stepford Wives. Again, I have a review for this linked up above. I did a buddy read for this book with Hillary from Melted Books. It was amazing. I loved it. It also made me really uncomfortable, but that's also the point of the book. You are following Joanna as she is living in Stepford, trying to find out what is up with the wives of Stepford, who are really addicted to housekeeping for some reason. This book really explores the fear of feminism and I just, I loved it. I recommend the 1970s version of the film as it is most accurate to the book. Next up was The Caves of Steel, which is the first book of the month that I can actually hold up from my own collection. The Caves of Steel, I enjoyed. It wasn't my favorite. Uh, I liked iRobot better. This is the second book in the Robot series. I just felt kind of thrown into this world. So where iRobot has a series of short stories that progress in robot technology, The Caves of Steel really just jumps into this single world as we follow this detective and his robot partner as they try to solve this case. Again, I felt kind of thrown in. There wasn't necessarily a ton of explanation for things and we're trying to follow the detective as he gets these clues that we don't totally understand, but I am still interested to continue the series. I have all of the pretty paperbacks right here. I love these covers. Yes, that's like 50% of the reason that I got this series. Don't judge me. Next up, How to Be a Good Wife. I talked about this book a little bit in my video on book recommendations for authors. Link will be up above. Um, if I run out of room for links up above, because I can only include five, then I will put them in the description down below. How to Be a Good Wife leaves you wondering... There is a paw under the door right now. Yes, buddy? Meow. 
keeping the door closed for dishwasher noise. But Amadeus does not accept closed doors. Uh, anyways, where was I? How to be a good wife. We are either exploring mental illness or talking about how women aren't really believed. The reader is left to decide for themselves what the book is about. While I appreciated what Emma Chapman was trying to do here, we're just following this woman in her daily experience just over weeks at a time and I got really bored. This book could have been so much better if it was a novella rather than a full-size novel. There was just too little information or too little material to really put in a 250 page book. If it was shorter I really think that she could have hit the nail on the head with this one but it just didn't quite do it for me. Then I listened to Baby Teeth. Baby Teeth has taken over booktube or took over booktube for a short period of time. Um, people are kind of having mixed feelings on it. I also have mixed feelings. I work in a psychiatric residential treatment facility which relates to this book a little closer to the end. Um, so I appreciated that discussion. I liked having the author tell us about um, treatment options and how to help people who are psychopaths or sociopaths. This book follows a girl who hates her mother and loves her father and does more and more devious things, or things get worse and worse, um, as far as tricks that she plays on her mother throughout the book. Um, I just felt kind of numb to all of the violence that was happening in this book. I didn't love the very strong Freudian aspect of this book. It's a weird thing with psychology. We're told all the time that everything Freud says was wrong, and yet all you learn in psychology is about Freud. It's, it's very weird. This author took Freud and ran with it, and it just, something about this book did not work for me. I appreciated the ending, I appreciated some of the discussion, but overall it just, something about it did not quite work out. Then I read Motherhood. <laughs> by Sheila Hetty. This is, it, it kind of, it works the boundary between nonfiction and fiction. Um, I believe it's technically categorized as a fiction, but it takes so many concepts from the author's life herself. And as she writes the book, she does this toin, coin toss to um, answer some of her questions and includes that in the book. And that aspect of it is nonfiction. Uh, the coin toss I hated that thing could have been tossed out completely. You spend so much time hearing questions and answers from the coin toss. It's pointless. But this book is basically asking the question, should I or should I not have children and why? And it's following the nameless narrator as she goes through different life experiences, different conversations with people in her life, and tries to figure out whether or not she really wants kids. I like what this book was trying to do. Again, the coin tosses should have been cut. Um, I've already made my decisions as far as this goes. I just thought I would read the book to see what she had to say. And I listened to this on audio. And I may or may not have slept through about three hours of it. I don't actually remember what I slept through. I was listening to it and then I think... I, like, I remember being asleep for a period of time and awake and it was still going on. And I think two to three hours had passed, but I don't really remember. So if that tells you at all my feelings on this book, there you go. I, I liked what it was trying to do. I just didn't need it. And because I didn't really need it, I found myself bored by it. So I hope that makes sense. Um, So a lot of February just... Yeah, I read a lot more books in February than in January, but it felt so slumpy and I was just trying to get through book after book because as of this video, I am starting college tomorrow. This video is being recorded on March 1st. March 2nd is my first se my second first day of college. I'm working on my second bachelor's. So I was just trying to get through as many books as I could. And then 
came along the Dark Crystal, which really helped push me out of that slumpy area. Um, the Dark Crystal, this is a book made from the movie, so they like took the script and reworked it into a novel. They added a few details that you wouldn't know from watching the movie, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a fantasy book if you're familiar with the Dark Crystal movie. Um, if you like the movie, I have no doubt that you will like the book. It's kind of a fairy tale telling. It doesn't go super into detail. Um, some of that you would get from watching the movie and like seeing the sets. But it's it was cute. It was charming. It was fun. I'm going to revisit this at some point. I'm going to loan this out to fantasy loving friends. I recommend you find yourself a copy. You can maybe find one in a used bookstore. I don't know if they actually sell this anymore. Maybe they do because Dark Crystal's kind of coming back. This was also... I only ever watched the movie once. It was about a year ago. Then I picked up this book at the Friends of the Library. And this, I think, is going to help push me to watch the new series on Netflix, which I've seen part of but I still wasn't really familiar with The Dark Crystal, so I wasn't as into it as I could be, but I feel comfortable enough starting the series now, and I think I'll really enjoy it. Next up was my first arc of the year, Things in Jars, which this has been published already in the UK, and then I got it as an arc because it wasn't released yet in America whenever I got it. Um, I believe it was released February 4th, if I remember correctly, in Mo in uh, America, and I enjoyed it. It wasn't a favorite of mine. It's kind of a detective mystery book with some magical realism in there. I think I gave it like 3.5, 4. 3.5 stars. I enjoyed it. I would probably reread it. I'm interested to see more from this author. Um, Again, detective mystery, you're trying to find out about this kidnapped child who has mysterious powers. I liked the magical realism aspect of it, otherwise I don't think I would have enjoyed it that much. Detective mysteries just aren't something I reach for because all the detectives tend to be the same. The detective in this book, it's a lady detective. Um, she just got off of a case that went very poorly for her and she's being put on this new case that she doesn't have a lot of confidence in. So it's really interesting to see. I would like to see what else Jess Kidd has written. I think I would enjoy some of her other books. Then there was... Ah. The Flicker of Old Dreams. I got this on a subscriber recommendation. I finally got to pick it up and read it. And I just... Oof, I adored it. Reading the back of it, it's about a small town and you have this embalmer who's trying to find out where she's going in life. And that really gave me kind of Caitlin Doty vibes. Now whenever I read embalmer or mortician or funeral director, I'm like, Kate Caitlin Doty, I gotta read that. I gotta pick it up. I gotta see what it's about. I am so glad that I picked this up. It was amazing. So you're in this small town with this embalmer who is an embalmer because her dad picked up the funeral director business whenever the previous funeral director died and she just became an embalmer because that's what was available to her. And there was this accident that happened in her childhood where one of these two brothers died and the little brother was always blamed for that death and he comes back whenever she's an adult to help his mom as she is getting ready to die. And he's really looked down on in the small town community. This, I don't know that Susan Henderson is a local author, but this does take place in Montana. In the beginning of one of the chapters, it describes the city that I live in. So it's, it doesn't take place in my city. It doesn't take place in a actual city or actual town, but it is named after one of the counties in my state. And the description of this fictional town matches the current city that I live in. So I was like nerding out about that. I was super excited. I think the description in here of Montana was perfect. Like, you think, if, if you've been to Montana, like, it's beautiful, but in kind of a plain way. A lot of our towns and cities are very boring. Everything closes at five. Everything is just very traditional. 
but the description here, like you can you can visualize this very plain landscape, but it's still just breathtaking and beautiful. And you have this small town that is very like the small town I grew up in. It's smaller than the small town that I grew up in, but you still feel that sense of community, of tradition, of not liking people who toe the line or step over the line. And if you want to know anything about Montana or small towns, please pick up this book. It is so good. Highly, highly recommend. Five stars. One of my favorites so far of this year. Next book that I picked up was also a favorite. I got to read my third Ira Levin book, A Kiss Before Dying. Loved it. This, I had trouble categorizing. Um, I think what I ended up with was crime thriller? Mystery crime? Not quite a thriller, but not not a thriller. So you are following Dorothy and her boyfriend. Dorothy's father is very, very rich. The boyfriend is totally after the money, and she becomes pregnant out of wedlock. If her father finds out, they won't get the money. The boyfriend's in, in it for the money. So he attempts to help Dorothy with an abortion, and then figures, well, if that doesn't work, then I'll just have to kill her. So what's gonna happen? Um, the structure of this book, gosh, I really can't say anything because it's spoilers, but the pacing of the possible murder was very different than any books that I've read. Typically with crime books, with murder mysteries, you have the murder either happen at the very, very beginning of the book in the first chapter, or a possible murder at the end of the book after chasing the criminal throughout the story. This did something different. I haven't seen it before with the pacing of the murder. I really loved it. Um, then we get some other character perspectives throughout the book and just... Ira Levin is just, mm, no words, favorite male author. Read this if you're into crime thrillers. It's amazing. I don't know what else to say about it. Then I got to read my first Frederick Bachman. That was A Man Called Uva. I did actually own this book previously and I never got around to reading it, so I donated it. I am glad that I did that. I got an audiobook from Libby to read this and I enjoyed it. It's not a favorite. I won't read it again, but it was cute. It's about this grumpy old man. He's really annoying. You're trying to find out why he's grumpy as you follow him through his eventual friendship with the family who moves in next door. It was cute. It's worth a read. A lot of people really like it. It just wasn't quite my cup of tea. One way that I would describe A Man Called Uva is that it reminded me a lot of the opening to the Disney movie Up, where you have the old guy and his wife who eventually dies, and you're all sad and emotional and stuff. That those are the vibes that I got from this book. If you took the opening of the Up Disney movie and extended it into its own book, it would be A Man Called Uva. Also, trigger warnings or content warnings for A Man Called Uva for multiple attempts of suicide. Then I read yet another great book because February was finally looking up for me. Um, which, by the way, I also need to link up above my blind date with a book video that I did with my friend Demi because she chose a lot of these books for me, and they actually, most of them turned out pretty well. And one of those was Bird Box. I think this is the book she was most excited for me to read. I have seen most of the movie previously. I'm not into horror movies. My husband is slowly, gently introducing me to them. I watched most of Bird Box, and I really loved it. I was among the crowd that loved the movie. Then I read the book, which I also really loved. I think it's a well-paced, kind of thriller book. You don't really have any of your questions answered, which sometimes I like. It's not that everything's open-ended, it's just there's some stuff that you're not gonna know. And I, I, I kind of love that frustration and that curiosity. It just keeps me interested. I think I am going to pick up Mallory whenever that releases. I don't think that releases for another couple of months, if I remember correctly, but I'm hoping to get my hand on a copy of that. Bird Box is following Mallory in this dystopian world 
where there is something outside, and if you see it, you'll go suicidal and murderous and crazy. It's really interesting. Recommend it. Very thrilling. Also really short digestible chapters, which I appreciated because I haven't read many books lately with short digestible chapters. Next up was another Frederick Bachman book that I got on Libby, and that was Bear Town. I have heard so many great things about Bear Town. I finally picked it up. I'm super excited to pick up the sequel. Um, I believe it's eventually going to be part of a trilogy, but Bear Town is another small town book, and I love me some small town books. And this town's entire life, entire world is built on hockey. So of course, if you have a sports team, then you have the star of the sports team. And if you have the star of the sports team, they're going to do something really bad. And in this case, it was rape the hockey general manager's daughter. And everyone has a different idea of what happened, even though none of them were there for the event. Um, it just, it was so good. This is a multiple perspective book. I also adore getting multiple perspectives and Frederick Bachman just did everything right with this book. He's exploring people in different areas of the hierarchy throughout the town. You have the people in the school and the people on the hockey team, the people in charge of the hockey team, just all these different perspectives on what happened. And it's amazing, and I can't wait to read the next book. It's going to be so good, I'm sure. Frederick Bachman is very talented. Next book I borrowed from a friend, and that was Push by Sapphire. It is also known by Precious, which is a movie made out of the book. We are following Precious as she works on her writing and getting her GED, while also having two children, one of whom she cares for, one of whom was taken away from her. Her mom is collecting all of the Medicaid checks on her and her two daughters, and it's emotional, it's a little trigger happy, but I, I just, I loved it. There's a, there's a lot of really sensitive content here, like, just don't read it if you can't endure sensitive content. Mainly abuse, both physical and sexual, also verbal and emotional abuse. Um, this book could also be tough for some people to read. Not everyone loves accents, and this, I don't know what to describe it besides a black. It's, she's like from Harlem. It's got kind of that odd grammar. Um, it kind of reminds me of, say, reading Huckleberry Finn, where it's not going to be your typical English grammatical setup. Anyways, it could be a little tough for some readers to get through. I loved it. I think it really added a lot of personality to the book. I highly recommend it if you are a fan of very hard-hitting contemporaries like I am. Last book of the month was Beneath the Sugar Sky. This is the third book in the Wayward Children series. Not my favorite so far. It was my least favorite. I still enjoyed it. It was a cute adventure story. We're following the daughter of a character in the first book, um, and it's exploring a very nonsense world um, because it is a portal fantasy. The other worlds were the other books were exploring more logical worlds. This is more of a nonsense world, like an Alice in Wonderland type thing. Um, it had a lot of tropes in it that I'm not a huge fan of. So it just, it wasn't my favorite, but it was still like three and a half stars, which is really good. It was my least favorite of the three, but that doesn't mean it was a bad book by any means. Like I said, cute adventure story. I'm glad I read it. All right, everybody, jumping in here separately to go ahead and update my stats. I read 16 books this month. I DNF'd six, which I will go over really quick after my stats. Um, of the 16 books that I read, nine were physical, one was an ebook, and six were audiobooks. And countries that I've read, I read 11 books from America, Two books from Britain and one from the UK, so I determine that according to where Google says the author is from. Whenever it comes to UK, Britain, England, I am not entirely sure on the difference between those three. I apologize. 
Um, some of the author pages just aren't very specific, so I'm putting them in here separately. And I read two books from Sweden. My sources, I read six library books, eight that I already owned, I borrowed one book, and I read one advanced reader copy. And I managed to read one nonfiction this month and 15 fiction books. I'm a little disappointed in myself because I like to read more nonfiction than that, but it's only February, gotta give myself a chance, right? And I read seven male authors and nine female authors in February, which makes me feel better, because I read more male authors in January, which is a little unusual for me, and March is starting to shape up that way too, but we'll see. Typically, I read more female than male authors, I think, but I've also never kept track of it like I am now. Now for the Read Some Friggin' Books-a-thon that I am doing this year with Jashana C. I can leave some links down below if you want to run your own stats on your friends for the Read Some Friggin' Books-a-thon, and I will also link my video down below because I'm sure I've run out of link space up there by now. But my stats for Read Some Friggin' Books-a-thon, where I encourage my friends to read. I had seven participants this month, 26 books were read, and three are in the process of being read. For those who are still reading their books, all of them are enjoying it. For those who finished the books, 73.1% are obsessed with them, and 26.9% enjoyed them. They said yes, you know? Read Some Friggin' books a -thon was really good for February. We got a lot of books read. Most of those were from one specific person who only read 14 books last year, so he's showing some real progress. Um, I think he did say he's doing like five-hour audiobooks, but reading is reading. I love it all. I am very, very proud of all of my participants and excited to see what the rest of the year brings us. Now for books that I DNF'd this month. I managed to read everything that I went for in January. February was rough. Um, starting with House of Leaves. So, linked down below will be my books that were better before I read them video. A lot of people commented, please, dear God, DNF House of Leaves already. It's making you miserable. So, I did. Huge weight off my chest. I still want to finish it at some point this year, but right now I just gotta take my type A personality, set her off to the side, get her to relax a little bit, because it's not going to happen right now. I I hate that book so much. <laughs> um, next book that was DNF'd was the What the Book Club Read Margaret Atwood book for the month, and that was Surfacing. I got like four chapters into this, and I just didn't care. There wasn't really a story. I hated every single character. I all thought that they were just pretentious and awful. The Girls by Emma Klein. I picked this up because I heard it was a cult book. I got um 20% into this audiobook and the story was not going anywhere. Like we were getting kind of rumors of something that had happened or we were getting a bit of a backstory. I'm sorry if my lighting is going crazy. The clouds are going nuts out there. The girls, just nothing was happening, and I was really in this rut of not enjoying anything that I was reading, so it had to go. Orlando was my next Virginia Woolf read, and I got like three pages into that sucker, and I couldn't do it. Her writing is not for me. She's got some language use that I'm not used to. Just could not do it. I am giving her one last chance to get me with A Room of One's Own, which I should get on audio, I think in the next month or so. Um, I was told by a subscriber that I should try her nonfiction at least, so I'm going to give that an attempt. But if it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen, and I will be a terrible feminist who does not like Virginia Woolf. What are you gonna do? Um, other books that I DNF'd. The Underground by Colson Whitehead. I was reading Colson Whitehead to try and figure out if I could put him in my male feminist authors video, and it wasn't bad. Like, it seems like a really interesting concept. It's about the Underground Railroad. It's a fiction, and it's like magical realism, so he makes the Underground Railroad into an actual, like, physical railroad. But 
again, I was in between a lot of books that I wasn't really enjoying. I was coming up to the end of the month at that point as well and had other books that I was taking priority over. And at that point, I just wasn't paying attention to anything that I was reading. So I put it down. I do want to pick it back up again eventually. I just was not in the place to be paying attention to that book. And last one that I DNF'd was The Guest Cat by Takashi Hirade, maybe? Um, this is a novella. I was listening to it as an audiobook. It was one of those audiobooks where I restarted it like six times before I really started paying attention to it. And there, it's supposed to be following this cat and this family. And I probably got an hour into this, which is like a third of the book of the novella. And we're getting a lot of landscape description and some descriptions of the families. But again, there was no story happening. So I had to put it down and move on. Those are the books that I DNF'd this month. It was rough going. Hopefully March fares a little better. Here is a look at my reading journal for the month. You have my section up at the top here where I keep track of my 2020 reading goals. Here is my reading tracker saying whether I read physical, ebooks, or audiobooks for the day. Down here, my feelings for the month, which are kind of meh. Like, it wasn't that great a reading month. A lot of them were slumpy. I felt burned out. Here is my shelfie with little sketches of the book spines for all the books that I read this year. I filled out almost my entire extra page here for books that I won't have room for on these two. If you don't know already from my last wrap up, I include this extra page with washi tape so that I can continue to fill out the rest of the books as I go through without worrying about having to skip ahead six pages to get to my next section. And then here we have kind of a summary of my reading wrap up for the month. You've got the Read Some Friggin' books a -thon. Um, my Devour Your TBR stuff, some other goals and stats here, and then I'm ready for March. This month for Devour Your TBR, which is a year-long reading book club thing that I'm doing on Goodreads with Destiny. I will link her YouTube channel down below. She just recently joined BookTube. Um, for Devour Your TBR this month, for February, we are focusing on Fantastic February, which is about reading more fantasy. Normally, I wouldn't really take part in this, but thanks to reading Mistborn last year, I am exploring fantasy now. Not into the big 14 book series fantasy, but like some fantasy here and there. I read The 10,000 Doors of January, which I actually started in January. I read The Dark Crystal which is a shorter fantasy. Things in Jars, which is more magical realism, but I'll include it as part of this. And I also read Beneath the Sugar Sky. So I managed to do four books for Fantastic February. I'm pretty proud of that. So that, that is it for me. I will see you all in my next video. I post every Wednesday, Sunday. Please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media. Please be this guy's friend. He needs more friends. He sleeps too much. I will see you all in my next video. Bye, friends.